Hello everyone, welcome to our live show for today. And I think you can probably hear us now on the microphone, which is a which is an improvement. I've got Steve with me. Yeah, I'm not sure that was a good idea. It seems to have thrown you completely out of all your, uh, your technical setup. It's, it's been good a, to be here anyway. It's been a long day. We are talking today about remixes, mashups, re-edits and bootlegs. And the difference between them. You might come across these things in your DJing, you might find that name in brackets and wonder what it is. Mm. And you might even want to make these things and want to know the correct way to label them in your own remixes, re-edits, bootlegs. And bootlegs. Yeah. So the, uh, the subject today is one that we get asked about a lot. So we're going to go through them all. There is an article on Digital DJ Tips, there always is, of course, uh, which looks at these things, which is not actually live at the moment because Lauren is working on it right now. However, guess what? We get the VIP access. <laughs> it looks like this. Uh, and this is where you'll be able to see this video, but also read about these things a little bit down the line. So do come back and have a look at this uh, later on uh, today. If you're watching us live, it will all be there. Uh, but for now, we're going to talk through those four different types of yeah of, of, of remix re-edit bootleg mashup and there is it's it is very confusing it, it is it is uh, but but there are there are definite differences yeah now we have a course on this by our good friend layback luke which is called layback luke's bootlegs mashups and re-edits yeah doesn't touch Covers on three of those doesn't things. touch on remixes yeah and that will become clear as to why yeah, in a short time so we'll start with probably the most the least different one from the original song. The easy, most easily accessible as well. The one that you're probably doing in your DJ. Without even realising it, maybe. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And Which that is, is re the... Re-edits. So a re-edit takes a song that already exists, or a track that already exists, and it does something to it that respects the original song pretty much fully. Yeah. And things like... Well, I mean, the, the simplest re-edits that DJs just instinctively want to do is to create mixable versions of tracks that you can DJ with where the track may not have been originally produced in a way that was suitable for DJ. So typically that would be something that has a very short intro or no outro. And by re-editing and sort of restructuring the component parts of the music that's already there using, using editing software or your DJ software, you can extend the intro, you can extend the outro, and you can make this into a track that you can DJ with. Uh, often, they're called DJ edits for that reason, that um, it's been edited to make it easy for DJs to work with, mainly the mix in and mix out points. There are other things you can do as well. If there's a section in the middle where in the, in the song, it kind of the energy drops and you don't really like it and you want to remove that, you can do that. Or you get those pesky little extra bars of music that yeah. kind of throw you off, you can remove those. But a kind of the simplest form of re-edit is a restructuring of the track that's already there. You're not changing the tempo, the BPM, you're not adding any music, you're not taking anything out. You're just sort of restructuring it and make it work from an arrangement point of view, how you want it to work as a DJ. So a lot of DJs do this without even knowing they're doing it. You know, you're using the cue points, you've got quantized turn on your controller and you're counting along mm -hmm. and you're just jumping between the parts you want to play it becomes part of how you DJ. And I guess a lot of DJs wouldn't even consider that they're making re-edits live, but they are. Yeah, even if you just loop an intro of a track to use to mix in, you've effectively created a re-edit of that track. And of course, if you've got software like Serato or Rekordbox, they have built-in features to help you, like Serato Flip will basically watch what you're doing on the cue points and let you play it back as if it were a new version or a flip, which is another word for this kind of way of reconstructing tracks uh, mm. of that track. Recordbox in its creative and pro plans has got an edit function where you can just take one song and you can turn that song into a version that more suits you. Save it out and play it. Um, so article is live apparently now. So uh, thank you, Lauren. See, she's good. Yeah. She's good. So you can head to Digital DJ Tips and see the article here that we are talking about now. So there's a little bit there kind of explaining re-edits as we uh, as we define them here. And as we go through these, I mean, you may have seen re-edit used on a track which you think that's nothing like what Phil and Steve have just explained there. This has had other stuff done to it. This is called a re-edit. We'll come on to that because these words have been changed and used in different versions, but we'll explain why 
re-edit is used for slightly more yeah, complex. Yeah, these are, as we, as we will kind of touch on at the end, these yeah. are flexible ways of thinking about Interchangeable about. sometimes. Definitely. Yeah. And, and in fact, the one that we've got in the article, which you can go and look at afterwards, uh, is a re-edit, quite, quite a massive structural re-edit of Toto's Africa. And I've, I've, put, I've unashamedly put stuff in here that I like because I wrote the article. Uh, it's like a nine, ten minute long version of Africa uh, which it's is brilliant. Br yeah. it's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, but the point here is that they've done more than just extend the intro. Well, in fact, they they really have extended the yeah. intro. <laughs> For about 10 minutes. <laughs> and I know people, in fact, I've seen you <laughs> play that song and as soon as it gets to the vocal, it stops, it mixes out to something else because yeah, it's yeah. just the groove that they've created. Yeah. But nonetheless, if you if you were to go and spend 10 minutes listening to that example I've given you there, it's highly, highly respectful of the original. Same sounds, the whole chunks of the track they've used are the same. Uh, there might be a little bit of extra reverb or whatever, but ultimately it's the original song turned into a, a 10 minute slow burn monster. Yeah. So a re-edit is very respectful of the original track and it's basically to make it more fun on the dance floor or easier for you to use as a DJ. Yeah. They're the two main reasons. So we're moving up the chain from re-edits, which again, are simple enough to do on your DJ gear. You might even be doing them without realizing it. The next one is mashups. Yeah, which again, you're probably doing in your DJing anyway. So mashups tend to be the bringing together of two unlikely bedfellows who like, you just think, oh, that track could work really well with that. And you bring them together. They could potentially be from different eras, different genres, but like, you know, from a key and structure point of view, they just work together and create a completely new composition. And if these are familiar tracks, then they, create a real kind of like, you know, audience appreciation because it's like, wow, that's clever what they've yeah. done there. So that was, that's where, you know, that's in, in essence what a mashup is. It's mashing up two or more tracks into a new one where the elements of the original tracks really work well with each other. And quite often they're surprising and quite often they're done in quite a knowing way, in a kind of tongue in cheek way and in a kind of arch way. And it could be that one or one of, or even both of the tracks aren't particularly cool. Uh, and yet they're made cool by the, con the new context they've been put in. There's a great example in the article, which is Christine Aguilera and The Strokes, which is an all-time classic mashup. It's got to be 20 years old now, this one, called A Stroke of Genius. I really recommend, if you've never heard that one, to go and look at the article because it's a belter. Uh, when this, when this, um, you know, this phenomenon first started to become popular for, for me in DJing was, was in the 90s, uh, helped a lot by the Too Many DJs, uh, Soul Wax guys and their mixes. But at, when I was at Ministry of Sound, we actually launched the series called The Mashup Mix with these guys who called themselves the Mashup Boys. And uh, Why did they call themselves that? Bro? Yeah, they, they, they wanted to make sure it was obvious. Um, they were a, a nightmare to license because these were officially released CDs. Um, but there was a huge amount of interest in just the cleverness of bringing these tracks together. Um, and we had a lot of fun making those albums. Maybe we'll find the, uh, the, the album cover of that. But, it's, on uh, your, it's on your toilet wall i think it, it, framed it, it yeah. is yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. i remembered i remember um, these things so yeah mashups are and you can make them yourself nowadays of course you've got stems in your dj software so it's very easy to take a acapella of one song and an instrumental of another which is the classic mashup right you think oh that, yeah, that yeah. vocal would go well with that you know so again mashups are something which is possible for you to do even in your dj software you don't need to use ableton or anything more than what you've already got to do this as long as your software has stems and even if it doesn't we've got articles on digital dj tips that show you how to extract the vocals or the drums or the bass line or the instruments from any song and then use it in any dj software on any platform so these are something that you can try quite easily it's all about the idea really isn't it and also like you know the the we talked about re-edits being the entry point and mashups being the next part if you think of two tracks that you think might mash up and work well together, but you kind of overlay them and it's not quite working. Maybe the structure is not playing nicely with each other. You can re-edit one of the tracks by looping a section and extending it out in order to create the right structure for the other track to fit nicely over it. So kind of re-editing is probably part of making mashups as well in a lot of cases. The first part before yeah. you, yeah, before yeah. you start to do the mashing. Uh, so, right. So you can see already why these things blur because as you're gonna see as we move on, you know, the first skill, re-editing one track, the second skill, putting something from another track over the top. This is building into the kind of stuff we're about to, to start talking about. So the next two, bootlegs and remixes, are actually quite closely related 
And the difference is quite often access to the original and permission and, le and legality. <laughs> yeah. But first, before we... So we'll move on to bootlegs now. Before we, we, we talk about how we understand bootlegs as DJs, they've got a history which goes back further than, than the current understanding. And so, you know, back in the 70s, a bootleg was generally an album. You know, it'd be a, a Led, Zepp, Led Zepp concert, right, man, that they never released. A live recording, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they never released it, man. They didn't get it. And so someone, you know... <laughs> pressed it. Pressed it, yeah. got it out to the fans. And I remember buying bootleg, fantastic bootleg albums of, of bands like The Smiths when I was, you know, 18, that were available in places where you didn't normally find records uh, and under the counter normally. And some of them were very well made and some of them were fantastic concerts. And it's the only way to get this material. There's pre-internet. And of course, this is not, we're talking about entrepreneurial, shall we say. Uh, people who saw an opportunity. These are not official record labels or record companies. Or recordings. These, these are individuals who m could had access to the recording and had access to a pressing plant mm -hmm. who were prepared to press these records out of the back door where, you know, where no so one So you can see, what, you see where the word bootleg comes yeah, from. And literally go round to the stores with a van selling these illegally pressed versions of records. That's where bootleg comes from. And this is where the first dance music bootlegs cross over with that kind of scene of, of releasing live albums because of course back in the day some of the hottest dance records they were only 500 pressed yeah. so when they'd gone they'd gone yeah and then there was a big gap it, it was sometimes it wasn't even a when it was an if it ever gets released properly and sometimes it would get released properly and, and all the cool samples that were used originally have been replaced by new versions because they couldn't yeah, yeah. You know, so everyone wanted the original and so the, those same entrepreneurs i'm going to guess were then absolutely putting out bootlegs that weren't even any different to the original record. They were literally taking the original recording and repressing it. Sometimes with two or three other original recordings everyone wanted. There was a guy in London called Billy the Boot. <laughs> and he came from that kind of 70s live concerts pressing. And then when dance music kicked off, he, he was, you know, making a mint. But he effectively was a street hustler yeah, uh, who had those connections that I just mentioned and he that's what he was famous for and when Billy the Boot came into the record shops you were like oh what's he got what's he got this week <laughs> you know I mean? but then we come to now and now bootlegs tend to refer to a version of a song that's been remixed and we'll move on to a remix in a minute mm. so this is going further than a mashup and further than a re-edit this is someone saying look that new Adele record that new Adele ballad's got a really wicked vocal on it but there's no way anyone's going to dance to it I'm going to turn it into a dance floor banger and I'm going to remix that Adele track to make it something I can play in my sets and of course DJ Pauls DJ City BPM Supreme promo only and so on they kind of do semi licensed semi approved remixes like this where DJs can get their hands on songs which are not available from the record label but are useful to DJs. But you and I can make bootlegs and we make bootlegs by taking songs that currently exist, changing the BPM, changing the genre, writing our own drum patterns, changing the bass lines, mm. producing them. But what we haven't got access to is the original parts. Uh, or the permission. Or the permission. Yeah. So legally and also the resources available to you are very much DIY. They sort of become, rather than illegal, they've become unofficial. Yes. Yeah. And there's a lot of cases where an unofficial bootleg turns into yeah. something the record company likes. I mean, you've got a good example Well, also, of that. There, there are examples of record companies actually doing those behind the scenes and putting out a version that looks like a bootleg because it will get that cool street cred rather than being sent out by the, rec by the major record company. So they were sort of faking the whole wow. bootleg culture. Yeah. So you can try bootlegs. If there's a track you think needs remixing and you're, you're getting into production, you're getting into Ableton or FL Studio or whatever, um, the bootleg is when you take a song and you start to remake it for yourself. And in Layback Luke's course, he's got a great module where he, taught, where he did, does an example of taking a song in one genre and remixing it without really any... Changing the key, changing, changing the BPM. Changing the, the BPM, changing the style. Yeah. Uh, and, and using the original song to do so. So yeah. if you're interested in this, Layback Luke's course is a, a good place which also is a good place to, to look at re-edits and uh, mashups, yeah. which we've covered, covered so far. Which leads us to the final... Oh, and by the way, there's a great bootleg uh, here. Again, these are all unashamedly some of my favourites over the years. It's a DJ Zinc drum and bass remake of the Fuji's Ready or Not called Fuji's or Not. 
uh, which I uh, have the original vinyl of. I'm very proud of that one. I used to end the night with that. Uh, used to used to surprise people in a house club by ending with a drum and bass song, but it's such a great song that it worked every time. Uh, but utterly unavailable officially. Which brings us on to remixes. Mm, yep. So a remix is really just a bootleg, but an official one, right? Yeah, and also you've got you you will a remix typically if it's official and the record company and the original artist are uh, consenting to it and probably paying you to do it, um, you will be provided with all of the original studio quality separate elements, i.e. the stems, which is where the word stems comes from, of the original track in order that you can use any parts of this in any way that you want to create a remix version. Now, remixes can be as simple as, you know, the song keeping its kind of original arrangement, but it's but it's a more dancey version, so it still has the sort of song structure and stuff. And then you get really extreme remixes like Armin van Helden's... Um, I'm trying to remember the name. Yeah. Uh, Con- Tori Amos, Tori- Professional Tor- Widow. Tori Amos, Professional Widow. I mean, we're Widow. showing our age here, but yeah. these are the classic house house remixes back when yeah. this was becoming a thing. You know, that, that record, his remix became a, a hit record in itself, but he was given Tori Amos's original album version of the song. Which, which was like, a folk song. Yeah, right? folk song. And he just took a little vocal snip and just thought, and just basically made an Armin Van Helden banger and put this Tori Amos thing over the top of it. Um, and... You know, that was he was given creative license to do what he wanted with any any elements of it. Turns out he just used a tiny little bit and made a completely new version out of it. But remixes are, you know, and sometimes a remix can be uh, in a completely different genre. And, and quite often record companies, when they've got a song, so it could be Ed Sheeran, for example, they put together a remix package. So what they'll do is they'll go out to... Um, a kind of grime producer maybe or they'll go out to a hip-hop producer they'll go out to a drum and bass producer and they're looking to find remixers who've got you know who are obviously good at what they do but they've got you know that good good uh, profile in the scene to help this Ed Sheeran song be heard al- among so many different audiences mm. because there are so many different remixes available of it in different so quite styles. often you'll find that the best producers of any particular day uh, will also be the best remixes because not mm. only are they producing music that fills dance floors and that, t- that, that goes up the charts, but at the same time, everyone else is wanting a piece of their of their action. So they'll give them a- another current track and the producer will load their project on Ableton that's got all the sounds and all the programming in and just start dropping in pieces from, you know, it's quite easy to start making a whole load of remixes quite quickly if you're already on a particular sound or, or, or mining a scene that's working at that point in time. So remixes come and go in fashion just like producers do. And yeah. The record labels quite often will already have the relationships and might already have the contracts, and so it's quite easy. Uh, one of my favourite remixes, again, I, I had a lot of fun putting this together because I just literally opened my collection, is this one here, which is um, Timo Massey's remake of a track by Azido DeBase called Doom's Night. Now, you're to be forgiven if you've never heard of Azido DeBase because no That's one else... Mass. Or, or Timo Mas come to that. No <laughs> one else had heard of Timo uh, of Azido de Bass and no one else has since. It was an utter nothing song that, that Timo Mas, who was a great producer in his day, uh, turned into a, a, a very uh, a very groovy, um, deep, I don't know, yeah, techno bass, electro like track. Sort of yeah, it's a bass house tune, really. A belter. So again, these are all on the article over on Digital DJ Tips. I don't disagree with any of your choices, by the way. Uh, they are pretty we classic. Could have, we could have spent days putting examples, yeah, different examples yeah. in. Yeah, well, whereas I spent <laughs> about 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it was easy. Um, so that is that is the four big things you're likely to see. But as we said, there's crossovers. So for instance, you get VIP edits, which VIP edit implies it's something that's been made more friendly for the dance floor, quite often officially, and quite often by the same producer who made the track. Yes, true. Uh, and you also get as steve says bootlegs which are utterly official it's just you you're not meant to think that there's other examples aren't there yeah i mean james hype is like he just loves making his own you know he he's loves pop music and uh he's quite happy to sort of see a track that's blowing up in sort of pop or r&b and say oh you know i want to make a version of that that's going to work for my audience and my dance floor and he's not seeking permission to do that and, he's, um, and also, he's not sharing it with anyone. It's just for him and, no. his, and his sets. Yeah, yeah. Which should get you thinking, what can I do with my music that I won't share with anyone? This brings us on to the legality, mm. doesn't it? 
Yeah. So when we made the course with Luke, we were very careful to look into this. And and and, and what where, where we arrived at was if you're doing it for your own DJing, for your own sets, you're not sharing it, you're not putting it on SoundCloud, you're not trying to sell it, then you're probably going to be fine because you could argue quite convincingly, I did it live. Who's going to say you didn't, you know? So there is a big, big, happy gray area where as long as it's for you and your, your use and your DJing, you know, if James is doing it, uh, and and he's he's filling his set with his own versions of songs. You can probably do it because your audience is probably nowhere near as big as James is, right? So this is an area where if you're not commercially gaining from it, you're probably doing more good than not as far as the record label is mm. concerned, even if they hear about it, which they probably won't. So our advice as not lawyers is get on with it as long as it's for your own use. If it's not for your own use, don't say we told you you could do it because... <laughs> And you'll see, you know, James actually, when, when one of his unofficial remixes kind of blows up and has been working for him for a while, he does actually give it away. And he'll do it in a sort of like get the download here and it's an instant download. And it seems very like, oh, I'm getting that unofficial remix. But believe me, if he's got to that point where he's giving it away, permission has been granted behind, yeah. the, behind the scenes. It's, uh, yeah, be under no illusion. Right, so a couple of bits of housekeeping, then we will get to a few of your questions to end off today. First thing, the article on Digital DJ Tips, it's live now. It's called Bootlegs, Mashups, Re-Edits and Remixes. What's the difference? So go take a look at that. Now, the course, if you head to our course finder at the top of the page, uh, you will find down here a course in the production area from Layback Luke called Bootlegs, Mashups and Re-Edits. And this is where Luke teaches you how to make all these kinds of versions of songs for your own DJ sets. Well worth checking that one out. Now, though, we're going to head over to you guys and girls and talk bootlegs, mashups and re-edits because I have what you're talking about here in front of me. And uh, again, for those of you that are new to this, it looks like that. Look, see, it's very distracting because there's a 25 second delay. So we're seeing ourselves on there. Uh, not looking uh, anywhere in sync. Thank you for explaining to me that there's a 24 second delay. <laughs> With what we're saying. Just alleviated my panic. <laughs> <laughs> so hello to all the locals, Richie, Jack, Mixmaster, John Roback, to Bat and to Easy DJ, to Rowan uh, and everyone else here. Uh, it's good to see you as ever. Friends and foes indeed. Uh, let's grab one or two. Oh, look at this. Yes, we. I made it here with the goats. I think he means us. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, yeah, we are together. It does happen sometimes. Great seeing you both in the studio together. So yeah. the ruckus. It's good to be here. Um, so many tunes have longer breakdowns than the actual main parts, says Dave. <laughs> ain't that ain't that true of pop music nowadays? Yeah. Another reason to do some stuff. Kesha, I'm, I'm, I came at the right time. I need this. I'm working on a house music mix and I've done a couple of re-edits for a couple of songs. Well done, Kesha. Um, my dad's great, 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 great uncle discovered radio waves, says Jonas. Well, there you go. Cool. Jonas Hurts. Ba boom. Hurts. I see what he did there. Oh, I'm not saying you're wrong. Maybe you maybe he maybe he really did and you've inherited this. And his uncle started the car hire company, so uh, <laughs> he's, he's, he's doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I that's was like <laughs> it's no offense. Sir uh, Jonas says his name was Sir Heinrich Hertz. <laughs> Let's see if Sir Heinrich Hertz really discovered radio waves. Come on, someone tell or us. Jonas. Who's not Jonas? Um, so Richie says, I remember when I was using Sonic Foundry's Acid. Do you remember that piece of software? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you don't like my music has a good comment here, which we can expand on a little bit. Uh, a re edit only changes the arrangement, a remix can be a completely different track. So yeah, I. I I actually agree with that, but the reality is that um, producers, very, very good producers, have decided to use the word re-edit to mean a description of what it is they're making. And in my opinion, a lot of the things that they're making are absolute remixes. Remixes, yeah. So but uh, an example of this would be someone like Luxury or Late Night Tough Guy, who we were talking about earlier on. But right. but yeah, go on. there's still this sense that they are more respectful to the original. Like, for instance, yeah. Tori Amos remake by Armand Van Helden would never be called a re-edit because, no. <laughs> because it's it's not. No. Um, so no. there is this element of there's a, there comes a point where it's changed too much from the original to be called a re-edit, doesn't there? It's just yeah. where that point is. But luxur Luxury's re-edits for me are much more different from the original. So that I think that they should be called remixes because as well, Luxury has access to the original stems. So, so, but he built his whole kind of like uh, production style on re-edits. Uh, so he 
to a degree, was a bit of a disruptor and has kind of mm. redefined what a re-edit is. And these yeah. things do happen, of course. Yeah. These yeah. words do change over time. This is from Stan, who says, this is bringing us on to something we were talking about earlier, you know, in, in the studio. Uh, Stan says, I kind of like old tunes, having a new lease of life, but it's getting really silly now. And I know artists ain't getting royalties from a lot of these tunes. Stuff being released on Bandcamp for free, etc., etc. There's a lot of music now in pop, which is blatantly borrowed from the past, right? People are not even bothering to reinvent melodies. They're not even bothering to, to change lyrics. They're just changing it enough. Not enough to, to fly under the radar or to not pay royalties or anything like that. Leaving that aside, pop music has got to a point now where it's literally recycling itself in a way that we haven't really seen before, even though we've been around a long time. Mm. Interesting phenomenon, isn't it? Because it's easier just to acknowledge that you've nicked someone else's song right up front and put them, give them a writing credit and pay some royalties than it is to put out a new song and run the risk of someone saying, that sounds like my song, and then you've got a court case on your hands. You know, we were talking about Ed Sheeran and the fact yep. that he's dealt with this. So you see David Guetta basically taking a melody from the past, um, changing it, and the lyrics meant to make you think of the original song. He's not even trying to hide it and just changing it a bit. And, and yeah, like, I mean, but, but like everything in pop music, it sounds like a horrible idea, doesn't it? And yet you can do that well. Or you can do it badly. Yeah. And Getter, God bless him, sometimes really hits the nail on the head and comes up with a belter, even though it's an utter, utter, first time you hear it, you want to kill him. Three <laughs> listens in, you're like, do you know what? He's done quite a good job of that. Um, I, so, think, I think, you know, they're, they're looking at what has worked. By the way, could, which camera am I? We're on this one now. Okay, cool. Um, they're looking at what has worked or listening to, you know, literally looking at the charts of what records were massive hits 20 years ago. And, you know, if it was a catchy tune that was a massive hit, there's no reason why that catchy tune element of that song won't be just as catchy to a new audience now. That's, I think that's the, the, you know, at the base of what they're doing. For people who were originally around when those catchy tunes were hits, it's a bit like, oh God, they're just regurgitating all this stuff again. But there's a whole new audience who are finding these tunes catchy who didn't know them the first, way, mm. first time around. And, I mean, it is crazy the amount of you know, dance tracks at the moment that are borrowing some kind of element, either a sample or an interpolation or a kind of re-singing or a replaying of the, the melody or the hook. But, you know, these things were catchy then and they're catchy now. So but there's always been like, that. There's always been cover yeah. versions. There's always been yeah. remakes. You know, I remember Soft Cell's Tainted Love, which yeah. is a, obviously a, mo a, 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 a Northern Soul classic. Yeah, but, exactly, yeah. but But the point is that now it's almost like, Yes, of course, there are cover versions, but now even the original stuff is starting to sound more and more like cover versions. Yeah, with yeah. A diff under a different... Anyway. I mean, surely David Getter and his writing team must be trying to find a track that he can produce where he's got actually more than 10% of the, <laughs> of the actual writing credit for it because you have to give away so much, you know, so many different bits depending mm. on who it is you're borrowing from and your writing team and stuff. It, it's crazy. So a couple of quick comments. Cheeky sound men often record live shows straight off the soundboard. Yep, that's how bootlegs happen yep. in that instance. I remember hearing T-Pain say he was surprised to hear an instrumental of a song that he knew he never released an instrumental of, says Killer Strong. It was his discovery of Serato Stems. Oh, right, okay. So there you go. Phil Warrell, what's he Phil saying? Phil Warrell's saying, I remember the bootleg days, uh, getting white labels uh, under the counter from people like, yep. what was his name, Dodgy Dave? Uh, Pete, uh, the, Billy the Boot. Billy the Boot. Yeah. <laughs> Dodgy Dave. Yeah. SoundCloud is full of bootlegs that are fantastic. This brings us on to a good question. Let's go yeah. to the main camera again for a bit of variation. This brings us on to a good question. Can you put your bootlegs, can you put your re-edits, can you put your mashups on SoundCloud? Uh, legally, no. Simple. Um, uh, However. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen. If you do it, um, you are running the risk that the copyright owners of the music any elements of the music that you're putting on uh, make a copyright claim against you and that, you know, that the, the, the best that can happen is that that track gets removed. The worst that can happen is that your account gets closed down for, if it, for repeat offenders. So you do run that risk. Um, but an awful lot of it goes on. Yeah. And what typically tends to happen is, is if a claim is made against a track you've got on your channel, they, as a, they basically just remove it. They don't ask you to sort of, you know, that you can file a counterclaim if you want to say, oh, well, I do have permission, but of course you don't. And the removal will just be it. Um, I don't actually know how many strikes SoundCloud 
have got. I know that with YouTube, it was three. It's three, your, yeah. Your channel was under risk. Um, uh, so if anyone knows what that is, then uh, please let us know. But um, but yeah, you're you're running the risk of your your channel being being affected. But you know, some copyright owners take the view that if you're the right type of DJ and you've got you and that this version is getting the right kind of listens from the right kind of audience, which is reaching a new audience that that track and that artist is not reaching, that you might be doing them a favour. Yeah. And, and therefore the, the claim doesn't come against you. They sort of let it run and see how it goes. So uh, Bap Jap says DJs from Mars did mash up so perfectly and then it all mm. kind of got too much. Uh, also says, I feel like the aura of mashups and bootlegs has gone. It's not what it used to be. Yeah, it had its moment, didn't it? The mashups thing. There were there were there were clubs where all they did was mashups and so on. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, times move on, don't they? Uh, so uh, what else have we got? What else are you saying about this thing? Uh, Killer Strong says, I'm super new to the art, but I was always a fan of DJing. I've been playing for my wife while she cooks. Well done. Uh, and I've uh, I've done a lot of family parties and church events. The question is, have you been doing bootlegs, mashups, and re-edits without even realising it? Maybe you have, using all the wonderful tools <laughs> of digital DJ. So thank you for that. Uh, so Charlie says, that course with Layback Luke, does it use the software Audacity? Or better, do you have a course on the software Audacity? We so, so Luke uses Ableton. And uh, any version, by the way, you can use the simple, cheap version. Yeah. Um, and the great thing about his course is that it actually it's it's not assuming that you know how to use Ableton either. It's literally starting from the blank slate. You'll learn all the all the keyboard shortcuts and the keystrokes and how to actually use Ableton. It's a really good entry point into using that software because it can be hugely daunting using it just to make re-edits and um, mashups and bootlegs to begin with is a good entry level to learn how to you know, your way around Ableton and how it works before you would move on to kind of using it to produce your own tracks. The bootleg section of the course does get to start to add drums and melodies and, um, you know, move into production. But yeah, it uses Ableton. And the question about the uh, Audacity course, um, we did have one and it was called Make Your Own DJ Edits. Uh, um, but we actually removed it from sale from the site. At least temporarily. Yeah. And uh, the reason was uh, Audacity, the software, has moved on a little bit since then. And also, um, for me, it's like it's not the most efficient tool to do that job. Ableton actually is. And we just felt that, like, actually, you know, if people are interested in doing re-edits, there is only one course you should consider. There is, is really only one software you should try and use um, if you're wanting to do these quickly and use them in your DJ sets. And that's Ableton. So, um, so yeah, so Luke's course is the one. Heavy Chicken Radio says, I've noticed the covering of tracks with AI has become a thing this year. It's become a thing full stop, hasn't it? AI, who knows where that's all heading. Uh, so Max says, Ableton is perfect for making remixes. So there you go. There's a bit of reinforcement there. And DMC is a good way to hear all the best mashups. I'm not a fan, but they're very good value for money. So cool. DMC have been doing this stuff for a long, long time. Uh, and so yes agreed well i think we're going to leave it there people it's been really good to talk about this with you remember that over on digital dj tips you'll find the article where i've got all my examples of these and also you'll find the course uh, from layback luke where we give you how to make the first three that we talked about which is re-edits mashups and bootlegs do go and take a look at this video at the top of luke's course where in five minutes he explains to you why this is essential so <laughs> Thank you for being with me today, Steve. It's a nice change. Yeah, it's been fun. People think we're the same person, you know. I don't know why. I'm far better looking. So uh, it's uh, it's a pleasure. Safe journey home, back to your country. Yes. Not, not even back to your home. Well, you are going back to your home, but yeah. back to your country. And we will see you again. Well, I will uh, anyway. Uh, on Thursday, if you are a student inside the student group, because it's a student live show this Thursday. And so if you're a digital DJ tips student or if you go and buy Layback Luke's course today, uh, you will hear about that and you can come and join us then where we will cover more DJ questions and do our usual small group thing, which we very much enjoy. Other than that, next Tuesday. See you then. Till then. Bye bye. Bye.